In the 1970s, the Soviet Union was seeking to produce a new type of aircraft for their arsenal. They would launch a program to produce a new heavy bomber, incorporating new swing-wing technology and have the capability of flying at supersonic speed, with it being required to have a maximum speed of Mach 2.3. The program was launched as a direct counter to the United States' own supersonic swing-wing project known as the B-1. Out of the other contestants, the Tupolev design would come ahead, the design being named Aircraft 160M. The Tupolev design would encompass a blended wing body. It incorporated elements from the already produced Tupolev 144, the Soviet supersonic airliner already developed during the 1960s. The Tu-160 would take its maiden flight on the 18th of December 1981. It would soon enter production in 1984. Production of the Tu-160 would begin at the Kazan Aircraft Production Association. As a result of the requirements in the bomber competition requiring a heavy bomber design, the Tupolev 160 would be just that, weighing in at 240,000 pounds empty. Fully fueled, the Tupolev 160 can weigh over 500,000 pounds. It includes two internal weapons bays capable of holding up to an additional 99,000 pounds of ordnance. The Tupolev 160 also has the capability of carrying its ordnance externally as well. In order to move all of this weight at over Mach 2, the Tu-160 is powered by four Kuznetsov NK-32 afterburning turbofan engines, each engine producing 55,000 pounds of thrust on full afterburner. While many people assume this aircraft to be a cheap copy of the American B-1 Lancer due to a similar appearance, it's simply not the case. The Tupolev 160 is a much larger aircraft than the B-1 and has a higher top speed. It is also a different class of aircraft entirely, with its primary role being a standoff missile platform, being able to carry up to 12 KH-55 MS or KH-101 cruise missiles, which are fired from a rotary launcher that can hold up to six missiles. With the primary role being a standoff missile platform, it allows the aircraft to launch its weapons and return to base with minimal risk of being shot down. This massive aircraft is equipped with an Obser K radar, allowing tracking of ground and air targets. It also carries a separate Sopka radar for terrain tracking. Another noticeable difference is the color schemes both aircraft tend to utilize. The American B-1 is typically a dark gray to reduce its visibility, while the Tupolev 160 is painted anti-flash white, which is designed to reflect nuclear radiation in order to protect the crew in case of a nuclear attack or dropping its own nukes. While the Tupolev 160 is not a stealth aircraft, it was designed to have a reduced radar and infrared signature. In April 1987, the Tu-160 would enter service. It would first be operated by the 184th Guards Heavy Bomber Regiment, located in Priluki, Ukraine. Later that April, the Tu-160 would be delivered to the squadrons which were part of the Long Range Aviation Branch of the Soviet Air Force. A total of 19 Tu-160s were stationed in Ukraine after the Soviet Union dissolved. Ukraine would keep them as a part of their arsenal when on the 25th of August 1991, the Ukrainian government decreed the new nation would take control of all military units in their territory. By the mid-90s, all 19 Tu-160s Ukraine possessed would be effectively grounded due to the lack of technical support and spare parts. Since Ukraine had no value in the Tu-160s from a militaristic standpoint, they would attempt to sell them back to Russia. However, it would not be a straightforward process due to lengthy price negotiations. Ukraine proposed a $3 billion deal with Russia for the 19 Tu-160s. And while the Russians had inspected the aircraft and determined them to be in good condition, the terms were unacceptable. As a result of failure to reach an agreement, 
Ukraine would start scrapping the bombers due to the Cooperative Threat Reduction Agreement with NATO, which sought to get rid of nuclear weapons in the hands of former Soviet republics. But that wasn't the end of Ukraine's TU-160s. Immediately after NATO started bombing Yugoslavia in April 1999, Russia would resume talks with Ukraine about their remaining fleet of TU-160s. Ukraine would end up selling eight of their best condition TU-160s as well as 575 KH-55 SM cruise missiles back to Russia. In return, Russia would relieve 285 million US dollars worth of Ukraine's natural gas debt. The Tupolev 160 would conduct many operations and military exercises, such as in 2006 when a pair of TU-160s flew into US-controlled airspace in the Arctic undetected. Most notably, the TU-160 would serve in its debut combat operation as part of Russian military intervention during the Syrian civil war in 2015. TU-160s and TU-95 MSs would take part in airstrikes firing KH-101 cruise missiles from over the Mediterranean into the provinces of Idlib and Aleppo. As a result of their action, a total of 14 strategic targets were destroyed. The TU-160 has also been used against Ukraine as part of Russia's special military operation. The first reported operation in Ukraine was on the 6th of March 2022 when a TU-160 paired with a TU-95 flying over the Black Sea launched eight cruise missiles at the Venezia International Airport. Furthermore, on the 26th of June 2022, a TU-160 and TU-95 reportedly fired four KH-101 cruise missiles over the Caspian Sea and hit Kiev. The Tu-160 is definitely an impressive aircraft with an extensive service record and also setting many records, such as in 1989 and 1990 when the Tu-160 set several airspeed records in its weight class. It also set a record-breaking 23-hour patrol in 2010, with a planned distance of 18,000 kilometers being traveled. Russia is currently the sole operator of the Tu-160. There have been reports of negotiations with India. India is interested in purchasing six Tu-160s. If the plans go through, they'd become the first export customer of the Tu-160. Russia currently only has 17 Tu-160s, with 50 more newly built aircraft ordered as of April 2015. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell icon to be informed when I release new videos.